Hey everybody, I've decided once again that it's time for a ramble. Uh, I'm ready, hope you are. So, I had a conversation with uh, Dax behind the scenes, and if you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you know who Dax is. Um, and I was just showing him some of my recent videos of me going out into the community and filming activism once again, like I used to, and I joked about how I was becoming Mr. Clean, and I really do feel like this is happening, like, really, um, and some of you don't know who Mr. Clean is, and you could, uh, search my thousands of videos on my channel to find uh, the different interactions that happened with Mr. Clean and the Occupy movement, but I'm going to tell you the story because there are parts of it that are not on this channel and were not filmed. Um, back in October of 2011, when the Occupy movement was uh, still fresh and had a lot of people showing up every night in every city where there was uh, protests going on, in Colorado Springs, a man showed up to the protests and started arguing with all of the protesters, uh, just telling them that they, what they were doing was useless and what they really needed to do was get involved with politics and go get jobs and apply themselves and go to school and quit just sitting around with signs in their hands because it's not doing anything. So, of course that riled up everyone who was there and it, the discussion got really heated and um, I filmed him a few of the times that he showed up at the Occupy movement and I just I, I liked that he showed up because he had the courage to really take on everyone who was there um, it was always a great moment to catch on camera uh, so it all started with Mr. Clean the, the whole reason why he got the name Mr. Clean was not because he was bald Okay, uh, far from that. Um, he lived in the neighborhood where the Occupy movement had decided, you know, in Colorado Springs, they were going to start protesting in Acacia Park. And so he lived in that area, and it was affecting the aesthetics of his neighborhood. You know, he didn't like the trashy look of all the protesters. Um, he didn't like that they had set up basically a shanty town in what was otherwise a nice park. Um, he was in a running club that would go on runs all the time. Like, three times a day this club would get together and just run in, like, a formation, and they'd run up and down the streets right next to where the Occupy movement had their encampment. It was basically the main thoroughfare. So... One day, he came to the, the encampment, that corner of Acacia Park where they had gotten a permit to be there, and he had a bucket of water and a broom, one of those push brooms with stiff bristles, right? And so he dumps this bucket of water onto the the sidewalk where a lot of protest slogans had been uh, drawn in sidewalk chalk and he just starts scrubbing away with that brush and just ruining all of the different protest slogans and he was surrounded by at least a hundred protesters and he just kept on splashing water on chalk and scrubbing away and no one had the balls to stop him. Um, he was very brave. 
and he he kept having conversations with the protesters and he was very knowledgeable on economics um, he himself he, he worked in uh, the financial fields I don't want to get too much into his background I, I learned uh, things from him later because I, I met with him on other things after the Occupy movement um, I, I remember specifically in, in a coffee shop where uh, he and I met to discuss how a lot of the occupiers had become uh, delegates to political parties and, and uh, we were discussing you know game plans and yeah the guy was very realistic very realistic and I, I think what he saw in the occupiers in that moment must be what I'm seeing with protesters nowadays because I'm adopting the same stance that he used to you know look at all this craziness you know there's much better ways to go about fixing things and making your life better than uh, just holding signs and and singing and chanting the the chanting oh my goodness the, all the chanting um, to to see this week as they were leaving the mayor's office the black lives matter protesters that were all white on that day singing which side are you our friend which side are you on which side are you on, friend? Which side are you on? That that chant, that was a fucking labor union chant. Like if you if you look at the origins of all of the chants that they do, like uh, we have nothing to lose but our chains. Holy shit! The person who wrote that originally, look at her criminal record. Holy shit! You don't want to associate yourself with that. And the way that they, they've co-opted so many different things just because they like to chant, you know, and, and they like to change the words of the chants, but if you look at, like, the original intention, it's like, why would you associate yourself with that at all? Why? Um, so, yeah. Uh, a recap of this week. So, I went to two separate Black Lives Matter things, and the, the first one, we were all supposed to meet at a big red chair. That's that's where all the protesters were supposed to meet. So I go there, and I notice, you know, everyone's white, because it's the surge people, because for some reason, the Black Lives Matter people don't like to go into the mayor's uh, office, or... or the city council building. Um, it, this is a couple times that I've showed up to the things that happen in that area, and um, they just don't come. And so I thought they were probably going to be heading to the police station that they had protested before, because the the uh, instructions said that you were going to have to walk uh, no more than six blocks. And I looked at where it was, and I looked at where the, the police station they were at. I'm like, okay, well, that's where they're going. And they didn't tell anyone where they were going until they got there. And it was actually the mayor's office. And I was just, I was floored that, that I was filming something like that in the mayor's office. I was like, oh my goodness, this is good footage. Uh, by the way, I, I sent the footage to every major news network in my city, none of them picked it up none of them picked up the story none of them cared you know you go to their uh, facebook pages and look at the 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 comments from people i posted it on all of them and none of them picked it up not newsworthy to them that a group of protesters 30 strong can just walk right into the mayor's office and take it over for a couple minutes not newsworthy at all Probably because the liberal news media of all the major networks, 
they actually support the uh, the basic premise of Black Lives Matter, and they don't like the way that the uh, surge protesters and the local Black Lives Matter people basically are a mockery to it, and so that's probably why they're not uh, even bothering to report their things because they don't want to give them uh, any more support. So, I, I filmed that, and I posted it, and a lot of you guys liked it, and then I filmed the, what was supposed to be the protest of the basketball game between police officers and uh, urban youth, and that didn't happen because it was canceled. And I could find the uh, the web links that showed what times the thing was supposed to happen. And yeah, they were still up. So that doesn't all fall on the protesters because they called and they heard twice that it was canceled, but they didn't believe it. And I'm like, well, did you tell them that you were going to protest it when you were calling them? You know? Uh... So, yeah, there was a lot of craziness this week. Um, I think my my favorite moment of of all of that was uh, before marching to the mayor's office. I uploaded this this part of the footage um, in the in the pre march planning. Uh, the lesbian female white priest she mentioned that the police had been investing in surveillance on them and then she looked in my general direction as if to cue all the other people in the group to the idea that i might be a police operative i really enjoyed that moment um i don't know why uh context wise but it 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 was a rush to think, wow, you know, they're not accepting me because I'm white and I give off a cop vibe. Yay. <laughs> um, but then in that same speech, she said, you know, if anyone gets hurt, if anyone needs any medical attention, there's a nurse here, you know, and she's right here. And then, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, we're, we're marching all of two fucking blocks, you know, with road guards, like designated road marshals, where they they put duct tape on their arms so that they could be seen. It's like neon green duct tape. And now you're gonna appoint somebody to be the the nurse, the song master, and all these things. But seriously, how hard is it to walk two fucking blocks to deliver a fucking piece of paper, a petition, right? How fucking hard is it? How hard could it be? That's what it, that's what was going through my head, and then at the end of their uh, exhibition in the mayor's office, when it cut, came time for her to deliver that petition, when she got up off of her knee, when the, you know they were all kneeling like Colin Kaepernick, in solidarity with the NFL player, right? She gets up off of her knee and tries to take one step towards the mayor's assistant. To hand him off the papers. And she fell flat on her face. Same person who said, Hey, if anyone if anybody gets hurt or anything, we have a nurse. You know, she ended up being the one <laughs> who hurt herself. Oh my goodness. How hard is it? Take a few steps to hand over the piece of paper. So yeah. I imagine that's why they're not sharing the uh, the footage that I uploaded, I, I'm sure they've seen it, but uh, yeah, it, it's not like I added any commentary to that. You know, I choose sometimes to keep my commentary out of it and just let them be seen for who they are, and that was one of those moments. That that video, that upload was completely all them. And did they want to be known by their own actions? No, they're not sharing that shit. They're not sharing around the live stream that was put on Facebook either. I, 
in my footage you can see somebody with her phone she was live streaming to Facebook they're not sharing that either because it was so embarrassing and cringy so they're they're looking for a win you know and they're they're trying hard but oh so I don't know where to go from here on this ramble because, you know, I felt a bit of loneliness on YouTube as far as my connection with other YouTubers because of my um, changing political views and uh, just not really being firmly in any camp that, that's around. And I've seen it in my views and, and subscriptions. I've seen when I go do what I want to do and go film things instead of sit here in this in this chair and and argue with other youtubers when i go do the things that make me happy uh my subscriptions are, and views are stagnant and that's okay because uh i'd rather have the enjoyment of filming what i want to film than uh dancing like a monkey you know dancing for peanuts um, yeah, Ugh. I've had a lot of thoughts on my mind lately, um, about the efforts that I've undertaken in things, and a lot of that comes from recently having to take the True Colors personality exam, and then reading what your color meant about you, and I, I don't put much stock in it, you know, it's like, it's as reliable as astrology, um, at points, but um, I was thinking about some of the sentences that were written about the type of color that I was and then why they don't fit me. Some of them did because, you know, they're vague but some of them I was like, well, maybe in some parts of my life, but maybe not in others and, and it was just driving me crazy thinking about this shit. All in the wake of Invenergrilla's death, which you know, you start thinking about, wow, that he was really young, you know, and we all need to take better care of our health. Um, and I've been thinking about the direction of my channel, and I don't really like to make videos about the direction of my channel because you know, I've seen too many of them from other people, and I've spoken about that in a previous ramble. But uh, for now, I think I'm going to leave Black Lives Matter alone for, you know, maybe the, the better part of this month. And, you know, not wear out my welcome as, as far as being somebody who can get close enough to film them. Because if they, if they start catching on, then you're not going to get as candid moments out of my work. And... That's what I'm really going for, is like what they're really like, not what they're like when I'm there and then they react to me. Um, I'm not against, you know, confronting people and asking them questions and catching that on camera. I'm probably not going to edit in any Vuvuzelas of going, pur, 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 you know, every time I ask them a question that jars them, you know, or triggers them. You know, I'm not going to do that, but uh, I might ask some questions of them. But uh, tomorrow, um, after I go uh, get interviewed by someone because they needed to interview somebody in my profession in order to get their classes paid for to get into my profession by some uh, government program, after that... I'm going to drive across town and go all the way to Loveland, Colorado, where Donald Trump is going to have a political rally. And am I trying to get into it? No. No, I'll, I could just watch the, the video from home for that. I don't need to get in there. Um, and I'm not going to drive, go, drive to the other side of town, Parker, Colorado, where uh, Gary Johnson is going to be. The Johnson Weld campaign is having their rally there. I guess coattailing off of uh, Donald Trump. 
What I'm going to go for at the Donald Trump rally is a protest called Loveland Trump's Hate. And the, the directions on this one say, After Trump's horrifying, renewed, sexist, verbal assault on a former Miss Universe, we're asking for everyone who's comfortable, boys and girls alike, to show up Monday in Loveland at the Budweiser Event Center wearing your favorite tiara. Show Donald Trump that his disgusting behavior isn't stripping anyone of their dignity except for Donald Trump. Dust off your tiara in the closet or get a cheap one at the nearest Halloween store. We'll see you Monday at 2.30 when Tr Loveland... Trump's hate. So, uh, on my way, I'm probably going to stop at some store and pick up a tiara because it's not something that I just keep around the house. If I had one, I probably would have given it to a, a Goodwill or the Ark a long time ago. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll go get some weird tiara and wear it and then you know, get close to those protesters and see what they have to say because I just, I'm drawn to the cringe and I like getting up out of this chair and going and film, filming, you know, things in the zeitgeist in the moment of the day, you know, just, I don't know. And I know that I'm probably not going to get many views for it at all and I'm okay with that. Um, I, I seriously am. It's just the the mood I'm in lately. Um, that's the end of this ramble. I'll talk to you guys later.